Hello people, in this video let us look at portal hypertension as a pediatrics topic. So if the uh, pressure in the portal vein is uh, greater than 10, you can say 10 millimeter mercury, you can say it is portal hypertension. So in adults you have seen what the causes of portal hypertension are in our portal hypertension video in uh, pathology you have seen this. So basically uh, there is um, a prehepatic cause. So there is prehepatic cause, there is hepatic cause and there is post hepatic cause. Okay. So prehepatic means something before the liver right so these are the ones that you have seen in um, adults but in pediatrics you should remember the most important uh, thing is EHPVO this is something they will ask you a lot EHPVO extra hepatic portal veno venous occlusion okay this happens so obstruction sorry obstruction extra uh, hepatic por uh, porto venous obstruction is the most common in India which is the cause for the portal hypertension in children okay and um, why does this happen? This happens because of um, uh, neonatal umbilical sepsis, umbilical vein catheterization. If you catheterize the umbilical vein, dehydration, peritonitis, hypercoagulable state. So these are the factors that lead to that EHPVO. Okay, EHPVO, EHPVO, pediatric portal hypertension cause very common in India. Okay, this is what you have to remember. Okay, this is what is most important for you in this pediatrics whenever they are asking you about portal hypertension. Intrahepatic, there can be cirrhosis, fibrosis also can be there in pediatrics. So cirrhosis can be uh, there, fibrosis can be there, fibrosis can be congenital hepatic fibrosis or uh, non cirrhotic portal fibrosis. So we are talking about the liver fibrosis. Okay. In children, there can be again Budchari uh, Chiari syndrome where the hepatic vein is blocked. So um, there can be portal hypertension, okay, Bucciari syndrome where what is the, what is a uh, Bucciari syndrome, hepatic vein is blocked, so these children will have what, uh, portal hypertension, very good people, uh, post hepatic, um, again uh, after this, right, when it leaves, there can be occlusion of hepatic veins, etc, same thing, okay, but children mainly you remember it is prehepatic is the main thing, EHPVO, 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 okay, so basically in children what happens, See, this is your uh, portal vein, right? This is your portal vein. It's coming from your splenic vein and inferior mesenteric vein. So, splenic vein, inferior mesenteric vein together forming your portal vein. Portal vein entering your uh, liver, going through all of it and getting filtered and the blood leaving via the hepatic vein and reaching the inferior vena cava. Right? This is what the story is. But in children, uh, when they are born, they'll have an extra here umbilical vein. That umbilical vein will join this, right? So, this whole system. So, um, umbilical vein will try to drain into your uh, heart, right? So, uh, there is uh, one extra thing here about children. So, that is why for portal hypertension, they can ask you in the exam. Uh, we told you, right, umbilical vein catheterization, all that will lead to what? Um, in pediatric population, it can lead to portal hypertension. So, you got it, right? So, um, what else? Um, now, let's go to uh, what will happen to these children. So, uh, how will these children come to you? Gas, upper GI bleed they can have, okay, or they can come with uh, splenomegaly. How will you know they will not come with splenomegaly? Hematemesis melina, that is they are uh, vomiting blood or there is blood in stool, okay. Melina is more like dark blood in stool. Upper GI bleed they can have because of esophageal viruses, etc. So what happens when the pressure is more here, uh, when the pressure is more in the uh, portal uh, uh, blood vein here and all, when the portal circulation has more blood pressure, uh, there is, uh, it is going to form some anastomosis. So, what will happen? It will form uh, the portal system will form anastomosis with the systemic circulation. So, posto cable, porto cable anastomosis. You'll have these anastomosis will happen at the bottom of your um, esophagus, behind the bare area of liver, right, and even in the rectum. So, these people can have hemorrhoids and esophageal uh, viruses. So, they can have uh, hematemesis. So, basically, uh, they can have even splenomegaly. They can have. So, in children, they have not mentioned hemorrhoids actually, but what the, what we told you in general is about uh, portal hypertension. So, basically, they will these people will have what these children will have upper GI bleed, splenomegaly, hematemesis, melina, jaundice. They can have if it is because of cirrhosis of liver, liver. That means because of intrahepatic cause. If it is, then they can have jaundice, ascites, etc. Hepatosplenomegaly. Always they are saying splenomegaly, so you write that. In Bucciari syndrome, they can have ascites and hepatosplenomegaly, okay, same thing. Then you can see some tortuous prominent back veins are seen in Bucciari syndrome because the hepatic vein is blocked, isn't it? So back, on the back, they can see some prominent veins. Otherwise, in adults, we talk about the caput medusae, right, around the umbilicus, but here they are talking about the back, okay, Bucciari back. 
because there is a uh, inferior vena cava is blocked okay so this is how the sequelae of phtn or you can see how they will present you can see look at uh, the complications so these also can, sometimes can be the presenting complaints right so let's look at this here itself uh, so they will have gi bleed yes we told you esophageal varices yes they can have a hyper spleen so that can accidentally rupture with small stroma right they can have ascites this we told you and they can have hepatic encephalopathy okay because of all these uh, hepatic encephalopathy is because of all these toxins is it and uh, they can have something called as a hepatopulmonary syndrome so here what will happen in this hepatopulmonary syndrome they will have uh, look at this this word here dilatation intrapulmonary vascular dilatation so the blood vessels in the lung are dilated so they'll have altered arterial oxygenation so oxygenation is not fine let's look at so they have dyspnea dyspnea platypnea that means dyspnea which is induced in upright position which is uh, a platypnea what is orthodeoxia that is arterial deoxygenation accentuated in upright position so that is what if you sit upright then their oxygen level drops uh, or they are more uh, uh, breathless okay so we are looking at what guys we are looking at the complications of what of portal hypertension in children hepatopulmonary syndrome in these people you can also see clubbing of the finger and cyanosis uh, because obviously oxygen is less so this you will do an uh, echocardiography etc to check how the things are uh, even with the uh, lung can you imagine echocardiography sounds more like a um, heart thing but here they are saying to demonstrate intrapulmonary shunting so some shunting is happening okay so uh, maybe both cardiac and cardiac stuff also they are checking so anyways the the only treatment here is liver transplantation so they don't like this at all right this hepatopulmonary syndrome they really don't seem to like it because if it is any other that uh, ehpvo and all that they are ready to handle it okay but this one they are saying you'll have to do a liver transplant which doesn't look good now coming to portopulmonary syndrome what is this porto so here it was hepatopulmonary now it is portopulmonary this is pulmonary arterial hypertension so portal hypertension now has led to pulmonary arterial hypertension a pulmonary arterial pressure greater than 25 mm of mercury okay so these people will ha can have cirrhosis or they can have non cirrhotic portal hypertension so again here these people will have pulmonary means dyspnea syncope etc again here electrocardiography they are doing for diagnosis so basically what they are telling is um, uh, whenever this um, hepatopulmonary and all is there you have to do liver transplant but otherwise that ehpv or all you can manage okay now what are the investigations you will order for these people ultrasound and doppler so ultrasound what will you look you look for any abnormality splenomegaly ascites collaterals liver abnormalities all that you can check doppler vascular anatomy basically you will check right size of portal vein all that you can check endoscopy of the gi uh, esophagus stomach uh, and all you can check colonoscopy from down you go you can check if there is some rectal varices guys are you understanding from you're checking uh, where and all those uh, varices are there right uh, anastomosis between the porto cable system etc then you can do some selective ct mr uh, for the porto venous system porto venography you can do for uh, checking the vascular anatomy guys LFT you will do to check if the liver is functioning fine because if liver is not fine then the person can have jaundice ascites etc right so that is what were the features of the cirrhotic portal hypertension right they have jaundice edema ascites etc they can also have hepatic encephalopathy if liver is not fine and then they can have spider angioma pal palmar uh, sorry palmar erythema gynecomastia right they can have uh, so so many things because of liver not being proper they'll have uh, liver enzymes will be uh, elevated right in case of liver problem okay so that's why you have to rule out whether it is intrahepatic or uh, prehepatic right in children coming to hemogram um, you will you can check blood picture whether these people have some anemia pancytopenia thrombocytopenia leukocytopenia because there can be hypersplenism which will lead to the destruction over active uh, spleen will destroy all the blood cells right prematurely so they can have um, and site opinion so these are the investigations you'll order these people now how will you treat so you either uh, treat all these complications right um, or you will uh, and also you will also treat the uh, cause of the portal hypertension this is so you just treat the cause etiology of the portal hypertension you treat okay so uh, if they have ehpvo that is extra hepatic portal portovenous obstruction yeah in these people you can actually manage better but if um, uh, the ones if they have cirrhosis 
then they will have to do liver transplantation because cirrhosis is a irreversible uh, thing right so if there is cirrhosis you have to do transplantation okay and all the other complications like we told you ascites and all you have to manage you have to drain the fluid or you have to give something which will make the fluid volume fluid less right that's it guys so in this video we wanted to look at this uh, portal hypertension but in a pediatrics perspective okay that's it for now see you